Hi everyone, welcome to LSPF TV. My name is Rijwana Udin and I'm going to be teaching you about Level 3 Financial Accounts Preparation. I'm one of the tutors here at LSPF who create videos that students need to gain tuition as well as assessment tasks, giving them the confidence they need to be successful in the exam. We're going to be going through 10 assessment tasks for over a 10 week period and we're going to show you exactly what the examiner is looking for. And then if you're sitting your AAT exam, why not send a comment in the chat box below? We'd love to know what your thoughts are. It's all about trying to show the examiner that we deserve as many marks as possible and we are going to be passing with above 70%. This question is going to be about constructions of general ledger accounts. It requires us to use the knowledge gained from any books of prime entry, any opening and closing balances, and using that to build a control account. And also trying to understand if we do have enough information to find out the balance at the end of the period or the balance at the start of the period. So we could have seen this scenario before. If you've joined me in the previous session, we did the balances relating to the purchases ledger control account. So this is the same scenario, but we're going to be reconstructing another general ledger account. Okay, so you are working on the accounting records of a sole trader. For the year ended 31st of March, 2017. The business is VAT registered. If you do have a tax sales registered business, then this is going to be dealing with the VAT control account. So you can expect such items given to you in the question. You've got the following information. You have sales relating to the sales day book, the sales returns relating to the sales returns day book. Now from your previous studies, you should know that the sales day book will record any credit invoices that you send to your credit customers. Whereas a sales returns day book will record credit notes that you have sent to credit customers. We've got purchases amounts from the purchases day book and purchases returns from the purchases returns day book. Purchases will be recording the invoices that we receive from our credit suppliers whereas purchases and returns relate to credit notes that we receive from our suppliers. Now in this situation, I can calmly and collectively say that there is no purchases and returns. So that's good for me as a student, because when I'm answering this question, there is one less thing to deal with. It says the VAT on discounts have been correctly adjusted in the purchases day book. We've got the balances, as at the 31st of March 16 and we've got the balances at the 31st of March 17. Now if I kindly remind myself I can see that the year end is the 31st of March 17. So March 16 is going to be relating to the balance brought down and 31st of March 17 relates to the balance carried down. So we have the opening balances and the closing balances. These relevant accounts are going to help us reconstruct the general ledger account that the examiner is about to ask me to do. We have the trade receivables accounts and this records the total amounts due from our credit customers. The trade payables account records the total amounts due to our credit suppliers. Closing inventory represents the amounts of goods left over and sold at the period end. We have the VAT. So we've got the opening balance, the amount due is 1806, and that's a credit balance. What do you think relates to a credit balance on the VAT account? Well, value added tax is going to be collected on behalf of HMRC on the goods that you've sold. This tax that you've collected cannot be kept for yourself. These are to be payable to the authorities. As such, this could have a credit balance because it represents a liability. Now you should know from your studies here that some of the amounts that you pay on your purchases can be claimed back as a refund. 
So sometimes a VAT account could have a credit balance or a debit balance. You must read the question very carefully and make the distinction between the two. So in this situation, I'm just going to put here liability. This is due to Her Majesty's Revenue and Customs. Okay. And finally, we have the bank account. We have the bank balance of 3811 debit. If the bank account has a debit balance, what does that mean? What does that represent? A debit balance in the bank account will represent an asset. It will lead to positive bank balances. A debit balance means that this entity does have cash in its bank. Whereas a negative balance relates to an overdraft and you can identify an overdraft balance if you have a credit balance on the bank account. So it's all about trying to understand the information that the examiner has provided with us and trying to realise that this is going to be a plus, this is going to be a minus, or this is an asset and this is going to be a liability. We have further information, general expenses, okay, all right. General expenses, we've got the net figure, the VAT figure and the total figure. I'm really not sure what I'm going to be doing with these. I'm going to read on, read the requirement and see if such information is useful for this particular task. We've got note number one. General expenses are not processed through the purchases day book. And 9012 was posted to the general expenses account. Or the VAT on these expenses is recoverable. Okay, so these expenses you've paid VAT on can be claimed back as a refund. So I'm just going to write here that these are refundable. And the examiner has clearly said that we should not be treating them as purchases. A purchase is made when you're buying goods in order to sell them on to your customers. For general expenses, they're not good enough to be put through to the purchases day book. The next sentence we have is cash sales of 4,200 were made excluding VAT at 20%. The total bant was posted to the cash sales account. Hmm. Cash sales exclude VAT at 20%. If you sell goods, you will collect the VAT, but you cannot keep it for yourself. This amount is payable to the tax authorities. So let us stop here and calculate what the VAT amount is. The VAT is going to be the net figure, which is £4,200, multiplied by the VAT rate at 20%. Can I grab my calculator and do this? Plug my numbers in very, very carefully so I don't make any mistakes. So 4,200 times 20%, that will give me £840. Okay. Now, is this VAT refundable or due to HMRC? Tax collected on your sales, this represents output tax. So this is payable VAT, amount that you owe the authorities on. All purchases were on credit terms, which means that you've bought the goods on credit. If you buy goods on credit, you're taking the goods home with you today, but promising to pay the supplier at some point in the future. So you haven't paid cash in on the goods that you've purchased outright. It's all based on credit terms. And the final sentence we've got is the trader took advantage of prompt payment discount whenever offered. And I'm not sure what I need to do with that sentence here. If the question does ask me about prompt payment discounts or PPD, then I'm going to be dealing with it. But this question is about ledger accounts. For prompt payment discounts, I don't think we're going to be tested in calculation of this discount. On the next page, we have oh, further information. Okay, receipts and payments recorded in the bank account include amounts from credit customers. 
So you have received money from your credit customers. So this relates to money coming into the bank. Amounts to your suppliers. This is the amount that you have paid the supplier during the period. So this relates to money going out. Amounts banked from cash sales. So if you sell goods for cash, you have received the cash outright. Now having large amounts of cash in hand is not safe. It could be exposed to theft or fraudulent activities. So the safest thing to do is take the cash and deposit into your bank accounts. So this is going to be money coming into the bank balance. A loan receipt relates to money that you've borrowed. And money that you've borrowed will relate to money in. Rent paid, this is going to be money out. General expenses, this is money out. Then we've got HMRC for VAT, payment. Okay, so you have made a payment to the authorities during the period. So this makes me understand that this is money out. Drawings, this is money out. And wages, money out. So this is all money leaving the bank account. Now we've talked about the bank account and the purchase of the account and the previous accounting period. And then we have part B of the question. Using only the figures supplied, find the closing balance on the VAT control account for the year ended 31st of March 17. Okay. So Vasilis is asking a question, which channel is for transactions? Do you mean level two bookkeeping transactions? If so, this was created about half an hour ago on a previous channel. So why not wait for the video live to be complete and then you can watch the final recorded video. I hope that answers your question and we look forward for you to returning back. Now while you're waiting for the video to finish, you're more than welcome to watch this one, level three financial accounts preparation or final accounts preparation. So, using only the figures supplied, find the closing balance on the VAT control accounts. Ah, find the closing balance on the VAT control accounts for the year ended 31st of March 2017. Note, the business is not charged VAT on its rent. Okay, so... I need to build the VAT control account, which means the closing balance will either be leaving me with amounts payable to the authorities or the amounts that we can refund or we can claim as a refund from the authorities. Now, I don't really know what the answer is going to be because I need to use the information and build up this VAT control account. It says, fill in the grey boxes using relevant items from the list below. In the CBE exam, you're going to be receiving a drop-down list and you have to choose the select, uh, selective names. You need to make sure that you are going to be dealing with balance brought down, balance carried down. It could also ask you, or well, there you go, you can see the drop-down list for yourself. Wages, general ledger, inventory, any of these items could come up. So the VAT control account is going to be towing, or telling us, not showing us, or whatever, showing and telling the amounts that we can claim as a refund or the amounts payable to. Right, so the first thing that I will start off with is the opening balance. The opening balance is given to us to be one, zero eight six credit okay so one zero eight six credit so i begin with on the credit side balance brought down one zero eight six and that is my first entry so what i can do is give myself a little tick here to say that I've dealt with it. Then the next thing I could do 
is bank. So if I go through this list one by one, I can identify the elements relating to the VAT control account. Bank. The bank amount relates to the amounts paid to the authorities. And the bank amount is money out. And if you remember, the amount that we pay to the authorities is 6169. Will these amounts be debited in the VAT control account or credited? If you paid money to the authorities, it means the amount that you owe them would have been reduced. If you have a liability and you paid off the liability, the liability will need to be eliminated. So we are going to be debiting the VAT control account by the amount 6169. So what I'm going to do here is write bank. And in this box, I write 6169. And there you have it, the amount banked. So Vasilis, are you currently studying AAT? Are you doing level two only? Just bookkeeping transactions or any other paper? I'd love to know what you're studying. So, 6169, bank done. Another thing that we can include here is the cash sales. And we know that VAT was charged on such sales. If I scroll my page up, we calculated that the VAT collected here is £840. And if you collect the VAT on your goods sold, this is going to be payable to the authorities. So £840 is payable. So this is going to be shown on the credit side of the VAT control account. So I put in here, cash sales, $840. That is the amounts due to the authorities. Very nice, very easy. The next thing we have is drawings, but there was no VAT element to drawings, so I could ignore that. The next thing we have is general expenses. And I do remember that general expenses did have a VAT element relating to it. If I, if I scroll up to remind myself, let's have a look. There we go. General expenses are not processed through the purchases day book and all VAT on these expenses is recoverable. So the 1502 is a recoverable tax. So I can place this on the debit side of the control account. And this relates to general expenses. So if I go to my VAT account, I type in general expenses 1502. The next thing will not include general ledger because the VAT control account is a general ledger account. If you include that, your understanding of the accounting system would be considered weak. So please refer to your notes to boost your understanding. Nothing relates to inventory, nothing relates to loan. But then we do have the purchases day book and the purchases day book records the amounts of goods that we've bought. And if you buy goods, these VAT that you've paid can be returnable or claimable from the tax authorities. So the VAT on your purchases is 24408 and I'll be placing that on the debit side to show that it's recoverable. So 24408 from your purchases day book. So make sure you choose the correct description and the account. That's 24408. Okay, very nice, very easy. And then the next amount would be rent. And we were told that the business is not charged VAT on rent, so we can ignore that. The next item we have is the sales day book, and the sales day book did have an element of VAT on it, so we are going to be including the amount. If I remind myself, for the book of primary summaries, 
The sales VAT is 31820. This is the tax collected on behalf of the authorities and therefore due to the authorities. So you have to create a liability for this amount and therefore it will be shown on the credit side of the VAT control account. The sales day book 31820. Thirty-one. Oops, eight twenty. Okay. And then another item would be the sales returns day book. The sales returns day book is going to have an element of VAT on it, and we've seen this when drinking up the scenario given to us by the examiner. The sales returns VAT is three triple two. Where would this appear in the VAT control account? on the debit side or on the credit side. Sales returns is when the customer has given the goods back to you. Let's think about what happened when the sale initially occurred. When the sale of goods occurred, you know that you owe the tax that you've collected to the authorities. But if the customer has returned the goods, you don't owe this VAT to the authorities anymore. So this will in fact reduce your liability. So VAT on sales returns will be shown on the debit side of the VAT control account. So I write sales returns day book. And the amount is three triple two. And there we have it guys. That is the building up of the VAT control account. To get full marks, the examiner says, find the closing balance of the VAT control account. And the closing balance is where we have to balance this T account. Do you know how to balance T accounts? Well, you add down both columns, putting in the higher total. So the debit column adds up to 32,401. And the credit side adds up to 33, let me try that again, 33,746, okay, so 33,746. So the higher total is going to be 33746. So we place that there. Let me just change the pin color. 33746. And then we have 33746. The balancing figure is going to be the difference between the lower total and the higher total. Okay, so that's going to be 33,746. Take away that which is 1345, okay? So 1345 is the balancing figure. So balance carried down, I'm getting 1345. And there you have it guys, that is the balance carried down for the VAT control accounts, okay? So, you can see the examiner has given us enough information to build this VAT control account. According to the examiner's reports, a lot of students did do well in this question and this task was the strongest performance out of the whole assessment, which means that they are getting full marks and they're showing confidence in their answers. Now, yes, you are going to be dealing with a control account Maybe the trade receivables control account, maybe the trade payables control account. 
but it could also be asking you to build the bank account, finding the balance at the end of the period or finding any missing balances. Now, if students did not do so well, then the issue would be to make sure that the opening balance is in the relevant credit side or the debit side. With a debit balance on the bank account, that's going to be on the debit side, or a credit balance will be on the credit side. So the closing balance must be taken to the side of the account which had the lower total. So it's essential that you read the question very carefully, placing the items in either the credit column or the debit column. And if you are going to be um, showing the amounts, then choose the correct account name or choose the correct description. It's all about the gaining of confidence and try not to omit any entries. Make sure you tell the examiner that you are able to do this and you can build it up. These questions here will be having automatic sum of the bottom of the debit side and the credit side. So try not to worry, these will be automatically totaled up. That will be the end of this assessment, ladies and gentlemen. I really hope that you found it educational, supportive, and it was fun calculating the balance. I really hope it gives you the confidence that you need to go away yourself and independently attempt these questions. We need to tell the examiner or show the examiner that we deserve full marks and just to show them that we can do this. Why not? We can provide them with the calculations. We can provide them with the workings. Thank you very much, guys, for joining me. We wish you the best of luck and we'll see you next time. Take care.